at each university every year there is a debate whether we should still teach compilers or not. And there are always people, especially those who do not know how, what compilers are, uh, say that we should not. But obviously it is still a very alive topic. Yeah, it's probably what they address is, I haven't read it, but what they address is the growing gap between uh, the computers that are being developed and the high-level languages. Yeah. And so compilers uh, are supposed to bridge this gap. And bridging this gap is becoming more and more difficult because the gap becomes wider. Uh, the essential challenge of the future computers is how to make large amounts of data available to the very fast processors. Uh, the common technique is have to have caches in between and hierarchies of caches and things like that. There's a lot to be done in, the, in this sense still, in this, in this area. And uh, hardware engineers just drive for speed and don't uh, take into consideration very much the software uh, aspects. And so they make life more complicated for the software people, to imp for the compiler implementers. And they are supposed not to call these things new difficulties, but new challenges. That's, that's the so modern yeah. euphemism for difficulty, yeah. 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 challenge. So you mean, so you mean that, that the hardware and software people have, have to work much more closely together right now than, than <laughs> in previous years? I, that has, in a way, always been my idea. But of course, ultimately, the computer users want fast computations. And they don't care how, whether the speed is now for good hardware or due to good software. They just want to have the overall effect. Uh, and the hardware people say, well, this is the way, the only way we can make our hardware first. New software guys will have to do your best. And the result is, of course, enormously complex compilers, which take a long time to develop, a long time to debug, a long time to load everything. I mean, in, in this paper, they also address some, some, some topics like also, par parallel compiling, surely, but also secure compiling and also verification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. regarding verification, I think uh, a verifying compiler for C++ uh, is probably is and remains an illusion. The question of mine is, do you see some new ways for for languages? Because because if uh, if we so it is possible to write a verification compiler, but not for C++, but for a, for an appropriately designed language with uh, with a lot of restrictions. For example, no aliases and no pointers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be right. it could be much right. easier. It's you you can make a verification, which is. A an exercise in formalism only by deriving properties of the program on the basis of clear-cut axioms and derivation rules in the definition of the language. That means we should first have a proper language which is so precisely defined, unambiguously, clearly defined. Then you can start talking about verifiers, otherwise it's futile. I mean, the most sophisticated compiler is, is helpless if the, the language definition is a mess. And there uh, we, are, we are way back. I mean, this beautiful language Java took four issues before, before they even brought out the clear syntax specification. And then it's long and lengthy and unnecessarily complicated. But if they just jot down some ideas, you know, in, a, in an ad hoc way, and then say, well, the clever compiler implementers will make a verifier, they're very much mistaken. These designers are lacking education. <laughs> Is it not true? <laughs> so, so you mean we should go back and, and, and start, or well, start designing a new language? Well, they could go back to Oberon and start there and improve it. Okay. That's as close to 
clear definition as you can with still having a useful practical language. They wouldn't have to start at zero. You don't have to ignore all the work done in the last 40 years. But certainly, and that is what's happening in the world, continuing programming with, with C and, and C++, that doesn't lead anywhere except to more complications, more disasters. And universities, I'm afraid, play a very bad role in this game. They don't produce anything anymore. They just take and buy what they get from these companies. And are happy if they get a contract from Microsoft or from Sun. Exactly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, this this actually brings me to my final question. I don't know if you if you last law have some no, no. If, if so do you have any any advices for students, for programmers, for practitioners that work in this area? You have influenced so much with respect to program languages and Oberon and so on. Well, of course, uh, if the world was ideal, I would gladly recommend uh, learn the basic concepts properly and then do programming with Oberon. But I'm fully aware that the world is not that simple. Uh, programmers nowadays are faced with very difficult tasks and they cannot afford to build systems from scratch. They have to use many tools that exist already and interface their new programs with them. And that's where the problem is. These interfaces are not even properly yeah. specified and yeah. fully. And many of the work comes from that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's quite well known that the, um, if 5% of a uh, man's time goes into programming is much, the rest goes into debugging. And that's bricolage, as the French say. It's really not the science, not even engineering. It's just trying and, well, fighting your well, muddling through. And I have just, as I said in that talk before, I have, uh, in the last uh, several months, I have designed new hardware. And uh, for that purpose, I learned uh, another language, Verilog, which is uh, much worse. Uh, derived from C, but it's it's a lot. It's very complicated, and designing circuits is probably also more complicated than designing a sequential program. But again, most of the time I s do not spend in developing my ideas and testing them out. I get things that don't work and then I have to find out for a long time where the bug is and sometimes I find it's in the commercial software system which doesn't do the right thing in compiling or generating the circuit or simulating it. May I add something which, yeah, sure. which I learned from Niklaus and after 30 years I can even formulate it quite shortly. First, at least even if you are not living in an ideal world, at least try not to do things you do not understand. <laughs> yeah. And if you are forced to do things <laughs> you do not understand, then at least do not speak about things you don't understand. Because I think that's, that's <laughs> the source of a lot of bad things that even professors, uh, I'm not an exception, but I at least try, uh, often do speak about things we do not really understand and people are doing a lot of things in, at companies which they do not understand and that cannot be good, that cannot be good. So at, at, at least I, I try to suffer if I am forced to do something which I do not okay. understand and do not be proud of that. Okay, I think that's a, that's a quite good advice for, <laughs> for the students and programmers in the world and probably can, can conclude with this now.